Big Brother, please kill the Ice Witch and make the world warm again. Big Brother, please kill these slavers and make these people free again. Big Brother, please destroy this city and make everyone free again. Big Brother, please kill Doma. Revenge me, please. Big Brother, please kill yourself. Kill Fire Punch. For me, Big Brother. For you, Agni. In the same volume that Agni regains his wholeness, his whole body, healed and in full, released from his agony, and we don't even really talk about it. It's like an afterthought. Like, oh yeah, I guess I'm not burning anymore. But in overcoming the fire, he becomes a person who can choose to light up, to let the demon out, to let shadow take over just a little bit. <sighs> The first time that he's had any real control over his power. That he's in some kind of balance with it. And as soon as he does, that little girl comes up to him and asks him to kill the person he's just found out that he can safely become. This is really interesting. <laughs> Last volume as a whole was some of the most interesting shit that I've ever read. Uh, the giant tree shattering down as Agni decides to kill Judah for the salvation of himself, really. And the end of her and the end of the tree and the insanity of the... All of the Evangelion evoking two humans at the end of the world. Which then also collapses to fall apart to find that a bunch of the struggles are still going on and there are all these little groups of disparate bands of humans trying to struggle out their fucked up lifestyles, cascading with their little bits of failed education in order to build out, hopefully, new societies that capture some fragment of the stability of the previous one. Agni chooses to surround himself with a Mad Max Fury Road style group of gals, anti-male, anti misandrist, and reasonably so, <laughs> girls trying to protect themselves. And he becomes truly a big brother to them. A protector and an ally. Still different, but family. He lies to Judah to turn her into Luna and knows on the inside that it is so comforts himself with it anyway. He knows that his reality is fiction. He knows that he is who he is, and his memories come back. But he still lies to make those pleasant fictions possible for him. And he lies by cutting his arm off to avoid revealing to the others that he can heal. Because it seems now that lighting up on that fire, that letting fire punch out is the thing that allows him to capture his whole regenerative ability. I don't know if that's an accurate or intended read, but that seems to be what's going on. Agni was armless for a while. But when he goes and he decides to protect them through his own means by slaying those soldiers brutally, then he heals. And then to cover, he cuts his arm back off. Not to feed someone, but to hide it away. And now Tenna has made of him a heartfelt request. Please avenge my father. Avenge Doma. Big brother, kill my father. Or big brother, kill the man who killed my father. And he's agreed. 
What the hell is that going to mean? I don't fucking know. We got to read some more Fire Punch. Maybe we get to, get to find out here. Maybe Fujimoto will keep stringing us along forever. But there are only two volumes left, y'all. Those. Those volumos. Also, we have done like a whole volume each time for the last couple times. And last week, I got really, really sick immediately after doing that. It's not because of it. I got sick because I the, the weekend before was Thanksgiving and there was people and... Clearly, I got something from them, and, and everybody got sick, but right after talking a bunch and getting my throat all scratchy and blah. So, I'm going to take it slow on the long-term talking. You may notice that I still have some nasality <coughs> and some... Ah, I'll try to keep it as cut out as possible and edit it as well as I can. Um, I think it should be my like not noticeable for the most part, so there you go. But we're probably going to read the half of a volume of Volume 7 of Fire Punch today, and that will be our shebang. What the hell are we going to move toward? What the hell can be moved toward? What is this world? What clusterfucks are we going to get up to? I don't know. So let's dive in, and we will have to just find out. Fire Punch, Volume 7. The first frame, or the cover... Peach and gray. Living skin tones on Judah. Gray. Green. Ashy. On Agni. Their two faces blended and melded as one. The paint overlapping and truly mixing and blending. As though they've fused. This makes me think of some of the um, uh, hermaphroditic conjoined imagery that's used to represent humanity as whole in the coupling of the binary pair of male and female. Um, you'll see this as two snakes intertwined in a lot of uh, uh, mythological like visualizations, but there are also genuinely hermaphroditic like male female presenting characters that are both that have um secondary sex characteristics of both men and women all throughout all blended all mixed sometimes with multiple faces sometimes with faces that blend features and what they represent to me in my like cognitive map of reality and existence and stuff is the uh, uh something akin to Jung's idea of animus and anima that inside each human being, regardless of their sex or gender, uh, there are both the masculine entities and the feminine entities. And those are names that we've put upon them because of the way that they correlate with our, our sexes. Not like they're not literally masculine or feminine in any way, right? But inside of you, we might say, there is a male you and a female you. And we would attribute like, drive and and anger and uh, uh protectiveness and uh all these other traits with your masculine side and we and competition and things like that and we uh, uh associate communalism and sensitivity and all of these other things and empathy with the feminine side um and people will refer to these as like the divine masculine or the divine feminine as these things that are not masculinity or femininity but this divine aspect that be, in, in the nature of christian understanding of divinity you can have a personal relationship with your masculine self or your feminine self i don't know if that's the, the fuck we're doing here maybe fujimoto was just like oh these this look cool but um a mixing a melding a blending is not far off from the ideas that we were getting to as we built up the tree and conglomerated all the humans into one goop something about a a blending of judah Luna and Agni seems right. Agni looks forward at the future directly, right? Where he's walking. And then this Luna alike looks upward at dreams, at the transcendent, at possibilities. And that actually matches that, that idea, that paradigm. But it also, it's you know, it's different in the Japanese idea because femininity is youth as well. So she's his little sister and also an emblem of youthfulness 
in general and so is looking up above the horizon toward thing toward a bygone star and he is focused on the world eh, lots of stuff that you can read into just a pretty picture of some faces i don't know if any of it r rings out true but i like talking about these covers because sometimes they're really cool still want to draw a little draw a little something here um over this week that i've been sick i did um did a bunch of work on figuring out how to do mouths and stuff and some other some other studies and things so i'm gonna see if i can incorporate some of that Okay, I don't know if that reads through, but ugh, like ripping yourself apart, splitting the two halves of you, tearing Fire Punch out from Agni is what I saw here. Yeah. Um, I think if I'd planned the split better and drawn it as two halves of a skull that had already been split with the stuff in between... Kind of like the first drawing that I ever did for Chainsaw Man, where Pochita is, like, splitting out of a Denji head. That... That would probably be better. But that's okay, I'm happy with it as is. Boop. Okay, let's go. I'm gonna... No, I'm gonna read these. Agni, a blessed with the power of regeneration. His little sister is killed by Doma, who engulfs Agni in flames that will never extinguish. Judah, a blessed with the power of regeneration. She has lost her memory and is suffering from infantile regression and believes herself to be Luna. <laughs> Neneto, a girl taken to Behemdorg with Sun. Sun, a blessed with the power of electricity. Agni saves his life. By the way, I'm not intentionally trying to make my voice deeper that has just been happening as I've, like, first, because I'm sick, I think is contributing to it. And second, I fixed something about the way my diaphragm was functioning, and I'm able to, like, speak from my diaphragm, like singers are supposed to and stuff. I wasn't able to do that before, so it was all in, like, throat and head voice. Anyway, I have a chest voice now, and it sounds darker, deeper, better. We'll see how it, um, how it wibbles out over the next few days. Hopefully well. Did I read Sun? Sun, a, blehem, a blessed with the, the power of... Sun, a blessed with the power of... Zabbies! Agni saves his life. Yeah, they're still out there. Sun and Nenato and uh, Metal Man are... They're still out there doing something. And I gotta mention that that's fucking dangerous because if they run into our new little squad of, of little sisters and Sun and Nenato are like, oh, Praise be! Lord Fire Punch! We might have a problem. <laughs> we might have a problem. They're like, hey, weren't you going to go kill Fire Punch? Why is this, uh, why is this little girl who looked, wait, why is that a little girl? Huh. Uh, why is this person saying that you're Fire Punch? That's weird. Hmm. Tenna, Doma's daughter, a blessed with the power of fire. She is impregnated when a refugee rapes her. Yeah. Yeah. One thing we don't know, I don't think her power of fire is fire that will never extinguish. It doesn't seem that that's been passed on. At least we haven't mentioned it. I don't know. Leon, a pupil of Doma, she has medical training. Lanu, a pupil of Doma, her twin sister is killed. Last episode, and found by Agni. Mast Man, a follower of Agni's, he's blessed with the ability to generate and manipulate iron. Shwing! And the part I've been looking forward to. I love these little super mega concise blurbs because it's always so funny to me how how much this story can be condensed down into a paragraph like this, but also how insanely dense these paragraphs are. They're like, Pfft. humans who possess unique powers are called blessed and two such blessed Agni and Luna live in a world frozen over by the ice witch. 
One day, Agni and Luna's village is attacked by a Behemdorg soldier named Doma, who is a blessed whose flames won't extinguish until they've completely consumed their fuel. Luna loses her life, but Agni survives, suffering a living hell of trying to master the art of controlling the flames that endlessly consume him. After exacting his revenge on Doma, he goes on to destroy the giant tree that the Ice Witch made out of Judah. When he comes to, he finds Judah is with him among the remnants of the tree, but her mind has regressed to that of a child. Agni takes the opportunity to lie to her, calling her Luna and having her, her refer to him as her big brother. While searching for shelter, the two meet a clan of women who were followers of Doma, and in order to stay with them, Agni hides his true identity and that of Judah. One of the girls is Doma's daughter, Tenna, and she asks Agni to kill Fire Punch. Agni has laid down lie after lie in order to hide his crimes, so how will he answer her plea? Fire Punch! Kill Fire Punch. Shink. Uh, what are you doing, bro? Down the river, but why? Not, no hand, okay. Mmm, those trees are fucking awesome. The way that they create space around them is amazing. Die. Die. Is he trying to kill himself? Live. Ah. Oh. Uh. 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 Huh? Oh. No. Uh, I'll die. I will this time. So, stop looking at me like that. Uh. Uh. Oh man. Yeah. Uh. Oh. And a meal. So, still trying to kill himself. Can't do it. Has the specter of his younger self looking at him like... Whoa. Shocked eyes. Im immediately, we've got so much focus on face, and, and Agni in particular, and Agni's state of being internally, not the external world. Very interesting. Very interesting. It's been so long since we've had meat. But with Oya dead, there's more for us to eat. Oh, with Aya. Oya. Oh, we've changed it to Oya. Okay. I wish Oya could have some too. Oh, uh, it's been so long since we've had meat. I wish Oya could have had some too. But with Oya dead, there's more for us to eat. Tana, that's cruel. Damn. <laughs> laughing, laughing. Yeah. Yeah, more for the rest of us. Your sister's dead. Even though just yesterday they lost their comrade, they're laughing. Your family, and yours, and yours too. I killed them, and yet they're laughing right in front of me. <laughs> just sitting at the table being like, I murdered all your friends and family, and you're just hanging out with me. Cool. <laughs> That's some cognitive dissonance, man. That's some messed upness. Oh. It's been so long since I've had food in my stomach that now I can't handle it. Brother? This girl who's not my sister is now my sister. These girls who believe my lies are eating the deer I killed. The daughter of the man I killed is telling me to kill myself. The girl whose twin died because of me is looking at me and smiling. Clunk. I think I prefer when I was enveloped in anger, pain, madness, and lies. Wow. A calm comfort to be in agony. At least you don't have to focus on the reality around you. <sighs> At least it's a good distraction, huh? It overwhelms everything, right? And it justifies all actions? Yeah. Whoa. <sighs> Still just laying there with a blanket over him. Yeah, they can't move him. <gasps> he looks at his hand. 
Cut to next one. Yesterday, when you fainted, you hit your head on your forehead on the corner of the table and were bleeding. But look now, it's almost all better. Hmm. You can take it slow. Let that arm heal too. And when it's better, kill Fire Punch. <laughs> Fuck. I have a pretty good guess where he is. That's where Son and Neneto and Masked Man are gonna be. Uh-oh. I'll take care of your sister then, and as for the food... I know. I know. What's the matter? Get me to my bed. Yeah, morning sickness. Didn't you know she's pregnant? Don't overwork her so much. It's good to get up and move around a little. That child is my fault. There is this growing element of uh, radical responsibility that Agni's taking. It's because he is in at fault for all of these things, but it's a total difference from where we've been before. Our whole life, it's been, this is all the Ice Witch's fault. This is all Behemdorg's fault. This is all bad people's fault. This is all monsters' fault. This is all somebody else's fault. It's not mine. Hell, it's even, this is all Luna's fault that I'm forced to live. Not mine. But now he's looking at everything, things that aren't even his direct responsibility, and saying, that's my responsibility. That's mine. That's mine. That's mine. And that can really overwhelm you, but it can also... The things that you can take responsibility for are the things that you think you have power over. So if you were responsible for causing them, maybe you could be responsible for fixing them. So it's actually really, it can be really empowering to think of everything as your responsibility. Everything is connected to you, but also very overwhelming. Super interesting. All of it is my fault. Then die! From outside the window, his little boy calls to him. So the disgust we saw earlier wasn't disgust at what he was trying to do. It was disgust at his failure. Just die. <gasps> die, 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 die. Kill Fire Punch. Those two things have the same meaning. So he wades out into the ocean. And under the water. Again. No Togata to dive in and save you this time. <gasps> Brother! She begins to run. Brother! And it's a reversal of the time that she ran in. Brother! Uh, oof! Oof! <coughs> Real coughs. <coughs> 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 Get off of me! Huh? Rejection. Oh, and she hugs him tighter. Go away! And she hugs him tighter. Oh. Live! Oh, you can't say that. That ain't your line, girl. Maybe it is your line. Why? Why? I've always wanted to ask why. Why do you tell me to live? You tell me to live, but why? He's dripping spit from his mouth and snot. She hangs her head. Because I want you to? And just how am I supposed to do that? Eat. Sleep. Wake up. Together with me. You can't. Then just for tomorrow, try to live. When there's no purpose and no end game, the next step is the only thing. Always the next step, Dal Dalinar. <laughs> the pain was beyond imagining. And now I don't think we're talking about fire pain. You don't need that. You get to experience the real stuff now. Shit. Oh. Maybe a little bit longer. My stomach acclimated to taking in food, but I lost all sense of taste. Oh, a little bit longer. I got better at faking smiles because I could no longer emote. Everybody came to trust me, but I lost the ability to sleep. 
I'll put time, time's passage. And it grows little bit by little bit. So we're doing this long progression of time thing with these same format panels each time. It creates this really interesting sense of montage, and we've done this before. And Fujimoto knows how to do this in a way where it cuts out the floor from underneath you. Like, whoa, something's totally different. Shakes it up. And the baby is born. The baby that is your responsibility. A child was born, but the sea froze over again. Cold returns. It was only a momentary lapse. Oh, and it's full. And the little child that is Tana's child runs up to him and hugs his waist. Big brother. Years have passed. I'm home. Welcome back, big bro. Welcome back, brother. Welcome back. I left the, the felled tree where I always do. All right. And together we all pray like the first. Like the first scenes of everybody praying over the first meals. My right arm healed. And I've lived for ten whole years since that day. Catching little minnows. Jesus, fuck, this is not good. I mean, it's great, but this is not good. I'm scared. Big bro! Where are you going? To cut down a tree. I've got to cut down more than usual. It had gotten a little warmer just before you were born, Oya. But it's cooled down again. I'll come with you. Luna, yes? Look after Oya for me. What for? Cutting down trees is dangerous work. If you got crushed under a tree, you'd die. Then I'd burn the tree down before it crushed me. Oya, why don't we go fishing together? We just might catch a lot. Okay. Big bro! Don't die! A little difference from live, but same idea. Care. Protective. Truly a big bro now. Don't die. Live. Clunk. So he's got a chainsaw. Hey. And he has cut his own throat with it, I think, and tried to bleed out again. Yeah. So Oya, don't come with me. This is my time to go and try to kill myself. So he's going out every day to cut down trees, and really he's trying to kill himself the whole time. Every time. For years and years. Fuck that. Ugh. Uh, fuck. Yo, Agni, Agni blowing up. The size of the man's, look at the size of the man's triceps. Jesus. Beefing. Guess carrying big trees around will do that. God, I love the way that he draws trees. And now we're back. This is the old days, right? This is the memories of father. A warm fire. A bed. Your hand. Something doesn't feel right now that you've regrown it. So this is Tana. Do you still remember about Fire Punch? I do. I remember. How old are you now? I don't remember. I'm 24 now. I thought that by growing older and having a kid, I would forget. But now, I feel more strongly than ever. Please, kill Fire Punch. Man, I've been trying. I've been really trying. The fire burns down. This shot from above in the bottom, bottom left-hand corner of the little bed in this little room with all the stuff around it is amazing. I don't know what the fuck it is about it. That's amazing. Brother, are you awake? I'm awake. Who's Fire Punch? You heard that? Are you going to kill Fire Punch? Fire Punch is a really bad person. His whole body's covered in flames, and he'll burn people, even children, to death. Tenna, Leon, and Lanou's families were all killed by Fire Punch. 
That's why I have to kill him. You can't. You might get some of his fire on you. So no matter what, you can't risk it. I'm the only one who can kill him. Still, don't. Whenever I think about you, I feel warm inside. But if you die, then whenever I think about you, I'll be sad. Okay. Two huge things. One, don't go out there looking for devils to kill because you might become one in the process is right in there. You can't go and fight him because it might kill you. Or, we know, might make you him again. Might make you that monster just as much as the other. Just like Doma. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Two, this is the first, like, legitimate, legitimate justification for the live command. Why do you want me to live? Why? Because I want you to is what we got before. But here it's because I think about you and it makes me feel something good. But if you were dead, I would think about you and it would make me feel something bad. And I've experienced thinking about somebody dead and it makes me feel terrible. And he should know that. He should know it all too well. I wouldn't be able to go on. That's not good. He slowly closes and opens his eyes. What if I were Fire Punch? What would you do, Luna? I'd tell you not to kill anymore. Not anybody. Fire Punch! Ah, uh, Fire Punch! 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 I have one word of advice for our religious leader. Fire punch! Fire punch! Try acting like the fire punch you imagine. If you do that, the people will see the ideal fire punch through you. What is going on here? The ideal fire punch? Try acting like... Okay, just to phrase this differently. I have one word for our priests. Try acting like Jesus. If you do that, people will see, see the ideal savior through you. Yeah? Yeah. Son. Fuck. With the legs. I should have realized once I saw the legs. Weren't his arms cut off too? What happened there? I don't know. So who's telling him this, I wonder? Who is this guy? He's shrouded in darkness in the first frame, so we're like, not <laughs> a little 50-50. So we have ourselves a priest who has formed himself in the image of the person that he, that he admires most, of his savior. Son, people believe what they want to believe, how they want to believe it. Fire punch! Fire punch! Silence! Guy looks down at his gun, looks up. Big smile. This man was gathering recruits in secret in an attempt to bear their fangs at agnism, Just like that traitorous Judah. Please, everyone, listen to what I have to say. Shut up! Kill him! Die! Silence! Fire Punch is the same man who burned down your homes and torched your families in Behemdorg. Don't you think it's bizarre that he's now treated like a god? <laughs> Behemdorg was ruled by Judah. She created a false god and laughed at the good people. I also just want to mention, son's a fucking idiot. He's a dumbass. Like, dumber than dumb dumb. So this is probably bad. That's when Lord Agni came down from the heavens. He freed us from Judah's dirty lies and charade. He didn't free anybody. He only killed. Those burned to death by Lord Agni go to a peaceful world near the sun, where there's no snow, hunger, or madness. All there is are peaceful days and Lord Agni's mercy. Oh, and he's, he's going shirtless to show that he's, not, he's immune to the cold. It's like a, a token gesture of the same... Um, it, the same like capacity to deal with pain that Agni represents. It's like um, Christian uh, uh, fl flagellating, self-flagellating or uh, uh, like partial crucifying themselves in order to demonstrate some element of the, of the capacity to take on, to take on suffering that Christ uh, is imagined to have like uh, embodied. Right. 
Oh my god, this is crazy. Also, uh, those burned to death by Lord Agony go to a peaceful world near the sun is just a, a flat justification for any kinds of harm and, and death. Um, but instead of saying those who fight and die in the name of Agni will go to heaven, it's that if you get dead by Agni, you win. So it's a death cult. <laughs> It's the flip opposite, polar opposite of the original mentality. You must live no matter what. No giving in to death. Now it's death is actually salvation. Beyond the realms of, of now and man, if you die at Agni's hands, or even perhaps believing properly in Agni, that in Agniism, then you will go to a great place beyond. So we've... <laughs> I've been, I've been reading a lot of, or uh, uh, I've been listening to the Nietzsche podcast by Essential Salts, which is quite, quite interesting. I like it a lot. Um, and I've just been learning, learning bits and pieces there. This is slave morality, but this is also, this is that Christian, uh, uh, what he would call the, the like life denying morality of the, the Christian religion, which instead of uh, saying this life right here, this being, this, this existence is an echo of godly things, um, as the Greeks might have. Like, you're repeating the actions of the gods, of greater entities. We convert to this idea that this world actually sucks and doesn't matter at all, and you should live your life for the next world because that's where all the important things happen. And Nietzsche views this as, like, tragic and utterly life-denying um, and self-denying and super in, inter, in, individually, intrapersonally, like, inside of yourself, destructive. And I, I kind of agree, and this is, like, right on on it. It's fucking interesting. All there is are peaceful days and Lord Agni's mercy. Lies! It doesn't matter. You'll never know his truth, because you're about to, to die by Lord Agni's lightning. You'll live your days in a hell buried in snow. Yay! Zappies! Fuck, man. Not you, son. Fire punch! Fire punch! Fire punch! Aren't you going to shoot me? Please, please have mercy to me! Uh, I'll dedicate my life to you, oh great religious leader! You damned lying Judah! Oh, we've we've turned Judah into a into a <laughs> into an adjective. You're a Judah! Oh my God! Into a descriptor, like you're a Judas. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> It is written in the scriptures of flame. Chapter 25, verse 17. Who wrote that shit? Was that you? Son, was that you? I think it was you. It was you, right? Those free of lies will have their futures denied by the lies and charades of those who tell falsehoods. Those free... Okay, so us, the free, the free ones, we will have our future denied by the liars and charades of the liars. In the name of love and kindness, happy are those who lead the, the weak through the valley of snow. For the reason being, he shall be protecting his brothers. He shall be made the flame that lights the path of salvation for the lost children. And so, with my anger-filled retribution and grand revenge, my punishment shall befall ye who tried to destroy my brothers. And when I exact my revenge on you, you shall know that I am your Lord. Twip. Boom! What the fuck? You thong! Lord Agni, is he flying now? Lord Agni. Uh... And in a shattered church. Whoa! With her? Whoa! Uh, that's probably the last we'll hear from any Behemdor refugees who are unhappy with Agniism. Nobody wants to die, and life here isn't so bad. The only problem now is the snow. For a while it was pretty good, but now it's grown cold again. Ah, this one's damp. Is that Ju- is that- So is that- Is that sun smoking, like Judah? Pretty important to mem mention this. Right? He's picked up the habits of the person that he calls the worst. The monster that you're not supposed to fight because they might get your, their fire on you. Right? And he's incensed with the fires of, of godly uh, uh, truth. 
But unlike Judah, he believes it. But he's doing the same damn thing, isn't he? Putting himself up. Whoa. So we're setting up a, 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 a son v his idol again thing. Oh shit, man. When Judah turned into a tree, Agni destroyed Judah, so it failed. But even though it failed for ten years, the world did warm up a bit. If we play our cards right, we won't have to suffer from the cold anymore. Son, we've looked into Judah's whereabouts and found her. Let's go kidnap her. Who is this guy? This isn't Jack, right? Or one of those fuckers? I don't think so. I don't know who this guy is at all. Chapter 12, verse 16. Thou shalt not brandish one's selfish interests at the risk of losing all peace and order. There shall be regeneration in the dark sun. We thought up all that bullshit together, remember? All followers of Agnism want Judah to die. Remember, we've ma we made up God, dumbass. Don't, don't drink your own damn Kool-Aid. Lord Agni's living with Judah. If we kidnapped her, it might make him sad. But if we don't do something, the world will get buried in snow. And then, son, all of humanity will die. Lord Agni won't die because he's surrounded by holy fire. Yo, he chugging. Glug, 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 glug. Chug down that Kool-Aid, boy. Agni may not be the amazing person you think he is, she finally speaks. <gasps> I'm going to bed. Agniism has enough military force to steal Judah away from Agni. Sorry, but I'll gladly make Agni sad for the greater good of humanity. You mean to get your fucking movie made, bitch? Kachik. Neneto, you hear all that? You're the head honcho now, aren't you? It's just an act. Yeah, but the act is true, too. What you act out becomes your truth. This is a, uh, we'll just say that this is really important. Agni says that he's unable to emote and be in all this stuff. But he acts it out day by day, day by day for 10 years, and it becomes true. And this has happened before. He acted out Judah being Luna and acted, acted, acted the lie, and it became true. He acted out being a big brother to these people, and it became true. He acted out being a god, and it became true. And he really did shatter the end of the world, right? Like, he really did. Fuck. It's just an act. I don't care what you do. Just don't destroy the lives of the people here. I'd never... And he stops himself because he can't even say it. We steal Judah from Agni. Here he's living with some women in an old salt plant. Seems his flames were extinguished by Judah. He's or just an ordinary blessed with regeneration now. Who will we send after her? Smile. Those whose families were killed by Agni and Judah. And who want revenge. And that's masked man in the front. We got some angry fucking eyes here. I mean, those are some angry fucking eyes, y'all. Okay, I think it'll just be one more chapter. Shh, shh, shh. I'm bored. Shall we go to where your mom is? I'm staying here. I'm going to fish with Big Bro and get lots of fish. I just heard a motorcycle. It stopped. It must be Lanu. <laughs> Oya, hide behind me. Nanato came to warn him. Nanato? You know her? Nanato, you're alive! I'm unarmed! I've come to speak to Agni! Agni? Ah, are you? Oh my god! You're Agni, aren't you? I, I need to talk to you, it's very important. Luna, take Oya into the house with you, but I'll be fine. She's not a threat. Whoa. Your flames, they really did go out. Do you know why they're gone? Because of Luna's blessing. Luna? Don't tell me you turned Judah into Luna after she lost her memories. While we've been rebuilding our homes, you've been playing house this whole time? We're not playing. Judah's partially responsible for your sister dying. Don't you get that? Tomorrow night, our soldiers are coming here to take Judah. They've been going, given the go-ahead to kill everybody but her. I know you don't want the other girls you've been playing house with to die. 
give Judah to me and run away with the others. It's why I'm here today. What? Uh, uh, but at this rate, the world will be covered in ice sooner than we realize. We have preparations in place to use Judah to heat up the world. Agni, the four others besides Judah, I know there are, oh, oh, there are women and a child with you. Are you okay with them freezing to death? One for many. How do you know about us? Sun once found this place and he saw you. He knows all this and he's let you continue your life here un uninterrupted. Sun. Sun's alive too? Sun prays for your happiness more than anything. More than ours, even. Sun honestly believes in your charade. He's your follower. So hand over Judah now and don't disappoint him. I'll come by again tomorrow night. Make your choice by then. Either save all of humanity or save a single person merely because she looks like your little sister. Whoa! Ha 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 ha! Happy! And he crawls through the fucking. Oh god, oh jeez. Oh fuck, punch in the ground, fuck shit! Fuck! That's 102! So there it is. It's just like the setup of the Behemdorg battle, the original Behemdorg battle, where we get the one side coming in and we know that they're coming and the other side is set up and we know that they're set up and it's just this build up toward you know the inevitable is coming and it's gonna fucking collide and smash bang, boom, bam, explode into a nuclear fucking reaction. What the hell, man? Oh, what goes around comes around, eh? Careful what you do, careful what you do, you might inspire others to act the same fucking way ten years from now, and you might be on the other end of it. Shit. Shit. God, this manga is so fucking cool. God, I love it so fucking much. God, thank you so much for watching and joining me and subscribing to the Patreon where you can get next week's episode early for just a dollar. And goodness gracious, golly god. Fuckity fickity fack. Fuck. We will read the rest of this volume next week on Monday for Fire Punch. See you there. Peace.